Welcome back to Bluegrass on this beautiful spring day. I got a fun little video for you. Uh, I've been getting a lot of emails because uh, people like watched Mr. No Name last year when he was uh, you know, eight weeks old, 12 weeks old, 16 weeks old in that series. And uh, they asked me all the time about how is his inductive retrieve coming? You know, like a, a lot of people are worried, like if you do an inductive retrieve, you know, if you kind of do a positive reinforcement retrieve that you won't be able to do all the traditional field uh, exercises that you need to have a reliable hunting dog and uh, I you know I don't necessarily think that's true okay so what we're gonna do is uh, we're just gonna kind of show you where we are at the one-year point from the last video series all right let's review for a second from last year's video series uh, when I say inductive retrieve all I mean is I'm trying to teach a puppy to pick something up and hand it to me when I ask them and if they pick it up and hand it to me uh, then they get rewarded okay and then as the puppy develops picking something up and handing it to me becomes a self-reinforcing pattern and I think it becomes very reliable there are a lot of people and there's one fella this old man <laughs> that trolls my channel all the time named Larry Andrews and Larry listen you are my number one troll so I'm giving you a shout out right now keep up the good work I appreciate uh, I appreciate hard work and trolls like you all right but what he says is that an inductive retrieve that's not how the professionals do it right you can't have a reliable retrieve uh, do, using treat work and stuff well the treat work is a very small part of an inductive retrieve program okay and it kind of starts off something like this you get your little dog it kind of likes to fetch oh my gosh kind of tease them a little bit and then when they put their mouth on the retrieving item you click and then like give them a treat and so they start to figure out pretty soon that uh, like putting their mouth on something when you ask them to is a good thing okay now after that you kind of just start to throw it down come here ruby you can do it and when they hand it back to you click and reward right okay now Ruby's just kind of started this so she's not an expert by any means oh my gosh you're a good dog though and you'll get a lot of this and guys right here this right here see where Ruby has kind of decided she's just gonna lay down and chew on it this is where people give up and they think that the inductive retrieve doesn't work and that it's not going to give you a reliable retrieve and let me show you the reason that they feel like it doesn't work is because when that dog's over there laying there like that people get frustrated and they do something along these lines give it give it ruby give it to me right and then it makes the dog feel stressed about the activity and uh, then of course it's not a positive reinforcement activity anymore even though you're using food because you're not being very nice about it okay so you're going to get some of this and when you get some of this don't worry about it you just come over here kind of get their attention oh you're a good dog and then try again just back up get them a little excited toss it come on Ruby you can do it and if you keep a positive uh, mental outlook then that positivity is going to move over into your dog and even though they mess up now and again as long as you're focused on enjoying the process every training session is a win okay so you kind of do like this like I'm telling you, you you get the dog to put his mouth on there then you drop it then you throw it a little ways then you start to make the game more interesting and one of the ways I make the more game more interesting is I use a more interesting looking dummy come on See how when that one falls, it kind of looks a little bit more like a bird? Oh, and that automatically increases the dog's desire to look. See how that looks? That looks. Got them feathers on it, like wings. Oh my gosh. I make it more exciting. And there's kind of a magic number when it comes to doing the inductive retrieve, and that's three to five retrieves per session. So this will be three. If I get this one, I should stop, <laughs> but I never stop on time. So I'm going to do it one more time. Oh my gosh, Ruby, you're so smart. Good dog. And my goal here is to leave the dog wanting more. So two big mistakes on the inductive retrieve, which leads people to think that it doesn't give you reliability in the field. Number one, you guys don't have the patience to see the technique through. So don't be blaming me for your lack of patience. Number two, you got to leave the dog wanting more. I would say that the biggest mistake that I see people consistently make with retrievers is they try to get too many retrieves per session. You have to remember the fastest way to teach a dog nothing is to try to teach them everything at once. Okay, so that's, that's, the, that's kind of where we are with Ruby, which is very uh, similar to if you go back to last January and February when I was making the same series with uh, Mr. No Name. Now I'm gonna get Mr. No Name off the four-wheeler and we're gonna show you how we're moving towards having a reliable retriever in the field.
<laughs> All right, guys, so now we're going to check in with my dog, and we're going to go over some essential retriever training skills. We're going to see if he's reliable or not, okay? So uh, what's the first couple of things that you need to be able to tell your retriever? You need to be able to tell him to come, okay? And then you need to be able to tell him to get into the heel position. And so what, uh, you know, what a lot of guys that train those kind of dogs say, they say here, and then they say heel and sit, right? Okay, so let's see if my dog will do that. No name, here! Oh, good boy. Heel. Very nice. Stay. Now, maybe cross my fingers and get all my treats ready. He'll stay there. Cameraman, go look at him. See if he's going to stay there. All right. Looks like he's staying there pretty well. Okay, so now when I, when I come back here, okay, is it really so much trouble? Is it really going to hurt anything if I reach in my pocket and I get a little treat out and I tell him that I appreciate him staying there? Of course not. I like giving him treats. I don't know why that drives some people so crazy. All right, what's the next essential skill? Oh, a dog should be able to, to hold something. They should be able to, to reach for something, grab it with their mouth and hold it, right? So they, you know, kind of what they'll say is the dog needs to be able to fetch and hold, right? So we'll see if my dog will do that. Fetch. Good. Stay. All right, so maybe if I get, you know, lucky, he'll stay there with that in his mouth. I'll be able to go do what I need to do, and I'll be able to come back, you know. All right, he did that pretty well. Again, is it too much trouble for me to reach in here and kind of say, well, you know, guy, I really appreciate that. So let's look at another essential retriever skill. The dog should be able to be directed to pick something up and return it to the hand. Now, I'm going to just lay this retrieving item on the ground here. And so what's different about this versus seeing something thrown or fall from the sky is that when an item is just placed on the ground, the dog is not uh, naturally stimulated to chase it, okay? So what happens a lot of times with retrievers is they're really good at chasing and getting things, but they're not super good at bringing it all the way back, okay? And that's the essence of a taut retrieve. I want to be able to have something placed on the ground, or I, know, I want to be able to know something's on the ground, direct my dog to go get it and bring it back to me. No, no. Good boy. Very nice. He should come right around here, get in the heel position, and hold the retrieving item until I take it from him. Very good. Good boy. So let's review where we are so far in terms of reliability. We're in an open field. I asked my dog to return to me. He did so willingly and happily. I asked him to move into the heel position. He did so willingly and happily. I asked him to fetch. In other words, to take his mouth and to place his mouth on a retrieving item and hand it to me. He did so willingly and happily. I asked him to hold the retreating, retrieving item. He said, sure, boss. I placed the retrieving item on the ground and asked him to hand it to me from the heel position. Again, he said, sure, boss. Now, here's another thing that you might see in traditional, uh, you know, Know, retriever training is what's called a walking hold. So in other words, a dog should be able to pick something up off the ground or you should be able to hand the dog something and you should be able to walk the dog on a leash and sh he should walk around with that item in his mouth until you have asked him to release the item. So let's practice a walking hold right now. Fetch. Good boy. Let's go. Oh, you're a good dog. And so we're going to walk. Very nice. I'll go up here a little ways and I'll turn around. Come on, don't in. Very nice dog. You a smarty. Very good dog. Very good. We'll turn around this way. Sit. I'd like for him to hold it a little better. Stay. So I made a little adjustment for him there. Very nice. You see he's holding it in the middle. Now, look, guys, like, it's another place where you get frustrated because they don't always want to hold it in the middle like that. And uh, if you're trying to do an inductive retrieve and you get mad when they grab it by the string or the tab, you're never going to get your inductive retrieve right because it goes from being a positive experience to a negative experience. You have to be very patient with this method. But I think, as you can see, it does work pretty dang well. At least, you know, it works good enough for me. Very nice. Now let's do a drill to work on expanding the reliability of the inductive retrieve. It's a three dummy drill. So I'm gonna ask the dog to stay there. I'm gonna come out a little ways in front of him. I'm gonna place my first dummy, go a little ways farther, place my second dummy, go a little ways farther and place my third dummy. And what I'm trying to do here is place these dummies far enough apart so that he doesn't get confused and try to fetch two dummies at once. If, uh, you know, if you start having trouble with them trying to fetch two things at once, then just back up and fetch one thing until they're completely reliable. Now, so I'm going to ask him to go get the first one and return to the heel position. Don't even fetch. Very nice. 
Put my retrieving item in the bucket. No, no, fetch. Very nice dog. You're a very nice dog. Good. And now I've got one more. Remember our magic number is three to five. No, no, fetch. Very nice dog. Oh, you are such a reliable retriever. Very nice. All right. And so look what he did. He went and got those retrieving items. He returned to the heel position and he waited uh, for you know me to ask him to release the uh, retrieving item into my hand. And all of that for, guess what? A click and a treat. <laughs> Very nice dog. All right. See you guys next week.